Hi, hi, children. Hi, hi, children of the Lord. We are preparing to meet Jesus. We thank God so much for our lives. We thank God so much for bringing us together today. This is the day that he has made, so we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much for such a wonderful day. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. We bless your holy name and we thank you for the fact that we are part of the living. We honor you and we adore you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is none like unto thee, O God. We pray and commit today's session into your hands, Father. We pray that you grant us the understanding. Help us to understand your word and help us to walk according to your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So today's lesson is in two parts. The first part is about Luke and the second part is about Esther and the Jews. Luke is one of the 27 books of the New Testament and is one of the Gospels. And we have got four Gospels and they are Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. The person who wrote this gospel was Luke. He was a historian, a physician, and a Gentile. And it was written in the year 60 to 61 AD. And it has a lot of famous stories. Some of them are the story of John the Baptist's birth to Elizabeth and Zechariah, the parable of the Good Samaritan, and the raising of the widow's son from dead in name. We're going to focus on one of the stories, and it is the Good Samaritan. So I'm going to read the story from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. And I'm going to read it from the New International Version. The Parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he fell into the hands of robbers, they stripped him of his clothes beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two silver coins, and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for your extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the man who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Amen. There's a short video that I'd like all of us to watch. 
The Miracle of Mercy, The Good Samaritan. This is Jesus, who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait. The man then asked, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. <laughs> They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> By chance, a priest came along. <laughs> but when he saw the man lying there, Ugh, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, whoa! Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. Please help. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Uh. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. All know the video was about a man who was attacked by robbers and he was lying by the roadside and three people saw him lying by the roadside the first one was the priest as soon as he saw him he just crossed the road to the other side and the second one was a levite he also did the same thing but there was a good samaritan who attended to this man so which of the three men do you think proved himself a neighbor to the wounded man and it is the one who should pity and mercy. So who was it? Was it the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? It was the good Samaritan. He should mercy and he should pity on the man. And the memory verse for this is Luke 19 verse 10. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. And I read, For the son came to seek and save what was lost. For the son came to seek and save what was lost. Amen. And the second part is Esther. And Bible verses are Esther 5 verses 1 to 8. Esther 5 verses 1 to 8. And Esther chapter 3 verse 14. Esther chapter 3 verse 14. Today I'm going to be reading from Esther chapter 5 verse 1 to 8 on the third day esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall the king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall facing the entrance when he saw queen esther standing in the court he was pleased with her and held out to her the gold scepter that was in his hand 
So Esther approached it and touched the tip of the scepter. Then the king asked, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom it will be given you. If it pleases the king, replied Esther, let the king together with Haman come today to a banquet I have prepared for him. Bring Haman at once, the king said, so that we may do what Esther asks. So the king and Haman went to the banquet Esther had prepared. As they were drinking wine, the king asked, asked Esther, now, now, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Esther replied, my petition and my request is this. If the, queen, if the king regards me with favour, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfil my, my request, let the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for them. Then I will answer the king's question. Now I am reading from Esther chapter 3 verse 14. A copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as a law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality so they would be ready for that day. Amen. The story tells us about Esther and the Jews. There was a man by the name Haman. He was one of the ministers of the king. He was promoted and he became very, very proud. And he told the king that he should pass a law so that everyone will bow to him. So all the people in the city at that particular time bowed down to Haman. But there was one gentleman by the name Mordecai. He wouldn't bow down to Haman. And he said he would only bow down to God. So a lot of people saw that Mordecai wasn't bowing to Haman. So they advised him to bow to Haman, but he said no. So the people reported Mordecai to Haman and Haman became very, very angry. So Haman now went to the king and then he said to the king, King, there are some people living on this land. They don't follow the laws of the land. They do their own thing. So please pass a law so that these people will be destroyed. And the king said, no problem. Go ahead and pass the law. So Haman passed the law that all the Jews would be destroyed. And the letter was sent to all the Jews. It, it made all the Jews very, very sad. They started screaming and weeping and wailing. And they fasted and they cried as well. So Mordecai, who was Queen Esther's uncle, became very sad as well. He put on sackcloth and ashes and he went to sit at the king's gate. So when people were passing by, they saw Mordecai. And some people went to Esther and said to Esther, Esther, we've seen Mordecai at the king's gate and he is crying. He is very sad. So Esther now sent someone to take clothes to Mordecai and requested that Mordecai should change his clothes. But Mordecai said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. We are very, very sad because someone is planning to get rid of all the Jews. So Esther, you have to do something about it. So Esther now sent a message to Mordecai and said to Mordecai, Mordecai, you know that I can't go to the king without an invite. The king has to invite me first before I can go and meet with him. But Mordecai said, Esther, don't forget that you are still a Jew. If anything happens to us, the same thing will happen to you as well. So please do something about it. Then Esther said, okay, all that I need from you is to bring all the Jews together and fast and pray for me. And then after that, I would go and see the king. And my servants and I will also do the same thing. So all the Jews fasted and prayed for Esther. 
So after the fasting and praying, Esther then went to see the king. So as soon as Esther went there, because of the prayers that had been said already, God gave Esther favor before the king. And as soon as the king saw Esther, the king said, Esther, what can I do for you? Even if you want help of the kingdom, I'm going to give it to you. Then Esther said to the king, King, I'd like to invite you to a banquet. And the king said, Really? Oh, that would be wonderful. And Esther said again, King, I would like you to come with Haman. And the king said, No problem, we would come. So when the time came, Haman and the king went to Esther's house for the banquet. So when the queen and um, Haman and the king were having a banquet. The queen asked Esther again, Esther, what is your request? Even if you want half of the kingdom, I'm going to give it to you. Then Esther said, King, there's someone who wants to kill all the Jews. And the king said, really? Who is this person? Then Esther said, it's Haman. And the king got angry and he stood up and went to the balcony. Then he commanded his guards to take Haman away and kill him. So this tells us that we serve a covenant keeping God. We serve a God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. We serve a God who does not sleep, no slumber. So anytime that we are in need or we are in trouble, when we call on him, he will answer our prayer. So we have to pray without season because they prayed for Esther. Esther had favor before the king and the king was so pleased to see Esther. Amen. Amen. So now there's a short video about Esther and the Jews that I would like you to watch. In the meantime, Haman was made the minister. Haman, the wisest of all men and our most trusted servant, is appointed today as the prime minister. He shall be the third most powerful person in the empire. Thank you, my lord. From today, all of you must honor and obey Haman. <laughs> I'm closer to becoming the next king, you fool. As years passed, Haman's pride and arrogance increased with his power. People had to bow down to him whenever he passed by. Long live Haman! Long live Haman! Hey, look, it's Haman. Come on, bow down, quick. Mordecai, kneel down. No, I will not. Ha! Huh. How dare he keep standing? I'll make him pay for his arrogance. Mordecai, what were you thinking? Don't you know that you are supposed to bow down to him? I shall bend my knees before no one but the Almighty God. Did you notice how the Mordecai insulted me today? Yes, we have been watching it for a long time. He's a Jew, and only the Jews are haughty people. It's high time that we teach him a lesson. You are the most powerful man in the empire after the king. Are you saying that you can't do anything against him? Hmm, you know that the Queen Esther is Mordecai's niece. If he finds that we are making plans to hurt the Jews, then he will inform the queen and she will in turn to the king. We must turn the king against the Jews by speaking ill of them. Hmm, you are right. I shall speak to the king today itself. Haman made an evil plan to destroy the Israelites in his kingdom and he went to meet the king. What is it, Haman? Your Majesty, there is a wicked religious group scattered all over the empire. They do not obey the royal commands, and their customs are different from ours. Huh? They are dangerous people. I have come to know that they have conspired against you. How dare they? Find out who they are and kill them all. You can do whatever you think is right. Thank you, my lord. 
I shall make a list of these people and send out the orders today itself. <laughs> I have tricked him. And as per the king's orders, the announcement was made to the people of Babylon. Haman decided to kill the Jews by casting lots on the 13th day of the first month of the 13th year of Ahasuerus' reign. A royal proclamation was made all over the Persian Empire. Command of the Divine Emperor Ahasuerus, it is our desire that all our subjects must have peace and prosperity. But we have learned that there is a group of people who under the pretext of religious regulations refuse to obey our laws. They are a threat to the peace and stability of the empire. Our wise and devout minister Haman has prepared a list of all of these wicked people. They will be put to death and here are their names. In deep sorrow, the Jews put on sack loads and prayed to the Lord. On day when Esther was passing by, she saw Mordecai and she sent a person to him. Queen Esther sends me. What happened to you? Here, take these new clothes and wear them. This is not the time to wear silk clothes. Our lives are in danger. Here, please give the scroll to the queen. Esther, remember the days I brought you up. Pray to the Lord and speak to the king and save our lives. Haman is going to get us all killed. Huh, what shall I do? I can't go to the king unless he calls me. He will kill me if I disobey. But he haven't called me for more than a month now. No, I'm not going to sit here and do nothing. I must do anything to save my people. Did you call me, madam? Yes. You should go to Mordecai and ask all the Jews in Susa to fast and pray for three days. But what are you going to do after that? After that, I'm going to meet the king. But he will punish you if you go just like that. I'm ready to lose my life for the sake of my people. Esther gathered all her courage and went to meet the king. What is she doing here? Queen Esther? But the king didn't get angry, and in fact, he was happy that Esther came to see herself. Queen Esther, you took a great risk by coming here without my permission. Don't worry, I'm glad you did this. Come on, tell me what you wish for. I shall give you anything you desire. I... I have a request. What is it? I want to prepare a dinner for you, and I want you to come to my place today. That's all? Ha 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 ha! It'll be my pleasure, darling. Is there anything else you wish for? Yes. I would be really obliged if you can be joined by our minister Haman. Huh? Of course. Why not? Can you join us, Haman? Of course, my lord. With pleasure. That's all I want, my lord. Now, I'll go and start the preparations. Hmm. <laughs> The queen seems to have great respect for me, and she is so eager to please me. But that night, the king couldn't sleep for some reasons, and he decided to go through the chronicles. Hmm, those were interesting times. Huh? Mordecai? My friend? I'm still alive only because of you, my friend. I'm sorry that I couldn't see you after that day. But I can't remember what reward I gave him. God! Yes, my lord? What present did we give to Mordecai for saving my life? But, but, we gave him nothing so far, my lord. What? Even after ten years? How could we not reward him for such a great service? 
My lord, Minister Heyman is here to meet you. Heyman? All right, I'm coming. Heyman came to the king to give him the list of people whom he wanted killed. The name of Mordecai was also present in this list. Heyman! My lord, I came here to give you the list of people who we are going to hang tomorrow. That can't wait. I'm glad you came, Heyman. I need your advice on something. Ask me, my lord. What should be the ideal gift to a person who I wish to honor? <laughs> Maybe it's me he plans to honor. The queen must have put in a good word about me. <laughs> hmm. Dress him in purple and let him ride on the king's horse through the city. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to be parading the city. Very good. You must do what you told to Mordecai. Huh? But? Yes, we failed to honor him for his service all this while. What you said is the right reward for him. Thank you, my friend. Oh no! Mordecai! The next day, Mordecai was taken through the city riding on the king's horse. He wore purple robes and the guards accompanied him. Look, that's Mordecai. Mordecai. That night, King and Haman arrived at Queen Esther's palace for the dinner. Hmm. This was a good dinner, dear. Thank you, my king. You can ask for anything, Esther. I would give you even half of the empire. My lord? My lord? Come on, go ahead and ask it. If it pleases your majesty, then you can save my life. What are you saying, dear? What's going on? I belong to the people who are on the list to be killed. We are all going to die, unless you help us, even Mordecai whom you honor today is going to be killed. But how? Who dared to do this? Who is that wicked man? It's him. Haman, sitting right there. No, my lord. I did nothing. Guards, arrest him. Please, I'm sorry, my lord. Don't kill me. I'm sorry, dear, for what happened. I will never allow anyone to harm your people. The next day, King summoned Mordecai to the court. Mordecai in place of that wicked Haman? I hereby appoint you as the Prime Minister. In the matter of the Jews, do as you please and you can change the laws as required. Thank you. Once Mordecai became the minister, he gave out orders to cancel all the laws that the evil Haman had ordered. verse is Psalm 121 verse 1. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where shall my help come from and you all know that our help comes from God. Amen. Amen. So I have some few questions that I would like to ask you and the first question is what was the name of the queen? I know that you know the name of the queen even though I can't hear you but just shout it out. What was the name of the queen? going to give you some few minutes to think about the answer and the answer is Queen Esther Queen Esther and the second question is what did Esther ask the Jews to do what did Esther ask the Jews to do she asked them to fast and pray she asked them to fast and pray so the next question what was the name of the person who wanted the Jews to be killed what was the name of the person who wanted the Jews to be killed Haman 
Father Lord, we thank you so much for bringing us to the end of this session. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. We thank you for teaching us about Esther. We thank you for teaching us about Haman. And we thank you for teaching us about prayer today. We thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, for reminding us that anytime that we are in trouble, we should pray. Anytime that we need protection, we should pray. Anytime that we need healing, we should pray. Anytime that we need something, we need to communicate with you through prayers. We honor you and we adore you. We pray that, Lord, as we are home through this pandemic, we pray that we continue to pray and ask for protection. Ask for protection for our family, for the church, for our friends, for the whole world in the name of Jesus. We continue to pray, committing anyone who is not well, wherever they are, whether they are at home or they are in hospital, Father. We pray that, Lord, your word says that you are our healer. You are a provider. You are the light in the tunnel. You are the one whom we always trust in. With you in the boat, we can smile at the storm. We pray that, Lord, you continue to be a hedge around us. You continue to protect us. Father, you continue to be our glory and the letter of our heads. We thank you so much for how far you have brought us. And we thank you that, Lord, by your grace, we are still alive to see this day. We honor you and we adore you. Thank you so much. And we know that every prayer that we have made to you today, you grant us all our requests according to your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So I'd like to thank you all. And I do know and I do believe that you enjoyed this session. And don't forget to pray all the time. Have a lovely week. And God bless you.